All right, so this is a congruent statement, and it's important to read these things correctly and to write them correctly um, because they convey more information than meets the eye. And I'll try to explain what I mean here. So we've got um, triangle TUV is congruent to, and I don't I might not be able to read that symbol very well, so I'm going to draw it here. So an equal signs with a little squiggle on the top means congruent to. Um, triangle G H F. Um, so that means that the um, triangle the, which is formed by the by connecting the three points T, U, and V, um, this triangle is congruent to the triangle formed by connecting the points G, H, and F. And uh, that they're congruent means that the corresponding sides are congruent, they have the same measure, and the corresponding angles are congruent, meaning they have the same measure. And it matters what order you write the letters in when you're talking about um, a triangle that's defined by three points. So uh, this is triangle T U V. Um, so if you'll notice, the length of the line segment T U is three. Um, so I'm just gonna write that like that there. Um, t from T to U is three, and from U to V, just following the order of the name here, T U V, U to V is seven. Okay. That means that the uh, length of G to G to H should also be three. If we've written this correctly, um, that length from G to H should be three, and from H to F should be seven, because um, these need to be in the same order. So uh, G to H is three, and H to F is seven. And then it's just kind of um, assumed that uh, you don't need to write down the third side because if three corresponds to three and seven corresponds to seven, um, the remaining side here eight obviously corresponds to the remaining side over here eight, um, if that makes sense. So the order that you write the points that define the triangle matters. So let's let's try one. Let's um, let's write a congruent statement for these two triangles. Um, these two tri these two triangles are congruent. They have congruent corresponding sides and congruent corresponding angles. Um, so let's just write the, cor the uh, congruence statement that says this explicitly. So we've got triangle, and we'll just it doesn't matter what order you do the first triangle in. Um, so pick an order and then follow that order with the second triangle. So um, I'm just going to be boring. I'm going to go in alphabetical order. Uh, triangle M N O. M N. So triangle M N O is congruent to. Um, triangle. Okay, so the length of the side MN is 3. I'm just going to write that there as a kind of reminder. And then um, going in order from N to O is 5. Okay, so I'm going to follow that same order. So what, what length is 3? Um, we want to go from 3 and then to 5. So uh, that means we're looking at we, we want that means we want to call this triangle if we want to go lengths from three and then immediately to five we have to call this triangle um, BJP um, so it's congruent to BJP okay so the length and just to double check our work the length of B um, to J is three and then from J to P is five. Yes, that's right. So um, the way you order the names of triangles like this really gives a lot of information. I can look at this and say, well, I know that the segment M to N is congruent to the segment B to J just because of the order of the uh, that the letters are in. I also know that the um, angle that's formed by, for example, M N O corresponds to the angle formed by um, BJP. So th these congruent statements can actually convey a lot of information about the triangle. Not just that they're congruent, but um, it actually says which sides match up with which sides and which angles match up with which angles.